Thanks everyone for attending. It's an honor to be here in, in the unique, in the only conference that holds a, a, a specific SAP security track. So there are no, there's no other security conference, IT security conference with a specific SAP security track. So it's an honor to be here. Actually, we're going to be holding another presentation by the end. So if you have the chance, I also invite you to, to attend that presentation too. So let's start. Well, this is the presentation. Actually, this is the, the um, template that we have from marketing. This is something that we uh, believe is, is more interesting. Um, that's how we, we name the presentation. It's called Jurassic Sub. You will see why, why it's, uh, we, we have chosen that name. So as for the company, I work at Anapsis. I'm the CTO uh, at Anapsis. Um, we, we are a company specialized on business critical application security, uh, focused very specifically on SAP, but also um, doing research and, and working on other products such as Oracle as well. Um, our, the company was founded in 2009, and since then we have been presenting on different IT security conferences, a specific SAP security conferences. So you might have seen some presentations of Onapsis even here on Troopers or in other conferences as well. As for us, uh, JP, that's me. Uh, my background is mainly on penetration testing, doing vulnerabilities research. So be before working specifically on SAP, uh, on, on, on SAP products and researching on SAP technology, I was doing like general penetration testing, general vulnerabilities research, and that's uh, where I came from, right? From the, the technical side. And Sergio? Yes, um, okay. Uh, I work at Donapsis too, obviously. Uh, at the beginning, I was um, uh, one of the main developers of Anapsis product. Now we are really focused on the, on the research of SAP products. So that's my background. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is the agenda. We will start talking about a very specific product developed by SAP, and maybe uh, many of you will have it running, even though maybe some of you do, don't actually know or are not aware of it. Um, we will talk about the different use cases. So which are the actual use cases or the actual products that are using this on the, on the background? Uh, we will talk a little bit about the architecture, uh, which are the services, the ports, the protocols, how its uh, landscape is looking like, how it's distributed and, and all that. Then we will talk about the attack surface, discovery, how to gather technical information, and then in the end, how to actually see real business information. And then drawing some conclusions. Conclusions, sorry. So SAP T-Rex, this is the product that we are going to be talking about. Anyone familiar with it? Uh, NetWeaver, Enterprise Search, uh, B, uh, BW Accelerators, Portal, Content, um, uh, Knowledge Management. Well, you may have this product still running in the background, uh, even though you are not 100% uh, sure that you have it, right? So it's integrated in many scenarios. So when you think about T-Rex, right, we, when we first heard about it, we saw it in customers, right? We do penetration tests, uh, we do assessments, and we start seeing different instances that uh, we, we saw it was T-Rex, right? So initially when we saw it, we, we think about this, this uh, giant animal, right? Um, that's, that's why the, the name of the presentation. Uh, but actually, T-Rex stands for Text Retrieval and Information Extraction. So basically, it's a search engine. Right? So it's, it's nothing more than an engine that you uh, send information to, it processes it, and you can uh, query or search the information across the, the different landscapes. So conceptually, it's, it's very simple to understand, right? But the problem is that if we don't have it properly implemented, well, we might be exposing very sensitive information. So some, some introduction in terms of uh, versions and, and what it does. Well, it started with 7.0. Uh, we will see some history in the next slide, but right now it's 7.1, actually patch level 63. Um, so you, it's still maintained, and you can get updates uh, uh, to, to actually update this product, because otherwise you can be exposed to, to vulnerabilities. 
Uh, it's a standalone engine. It's used by SAP NetWeaver, actually, in some scenarios, and other products, too. It has a unique seed. So if you are familiar with SAP systems, like this, this concept of seed and instance number, well, this product is no different. It's installed in a, in a box. Uh, you will have a, a unique seed. You will have instance number as well that will drive the services and the ports. It supports complex and distributed environments, meaning that you may have a single instance or you may have several instances of this product uh, interconnected, uh, talking to each other, processing all the information from different systems. So it could be a very complex landscape, right? We focused this talk on a, on a single instance uh, in default implementation, but this could be very, very complex. Um, well, it, could, uh, it supports search and text mining, so you can do a lot of things around text, right? Uh, stemming, uh, uh, words identification, com complex search, fuzzy searching. Uh, you can do like text and other text or like Boolean operators. It's really strong. Uh, uh, you can really do a lot of things. And you can also send like unstructured data, like documents. Uh, you have, a, for example, a CV, a resume, or uh, any PDF document or HTML document. Send it to T-Rex. It will process it. Or you may have like a business object, right? Something that you know its attributes, you know how it looks like, you know what's in, the, in there, and you just, send, you just say, hey, this is how it looks like, start indexing it. And then I will start uh, searching over it. So some history. We really had challenges trying to identify when it started, if it was a product that was bought by SAP or not. Um, so. We got something from Wikipedia, something from the documentation. Uh, apparently, the first code uh, written was in 1998. And this is important because when you start looking to a product and you, you see when it was uh, developed or designed, when it started, it gives you at least an idea on, on the roots right, of the product. So you can see that there could be some issues, maybe not, but that gives you a good idea. For example, if you are analyzing a product of, that has code from the 80s or from the 90s, you know that there is something there for sure. Um, the T-Rex, uh, the first component uh, in, in 2000, so we have some versions uh, back there. Then it was integrated into the BA accelerator. Maybe you are familiar with that. It's something uh, hardware-based. You get a, an, an appliance that has T-Rex uh, inside, and you can have uh, much, uh, a lot of appliances, integrate them, and, and you will have the indexing and searching across the different uh, products, right? For example, for business intelligence. Um, then there's another product that you, you will see other options as well. It's uh, NetWare Enterprise Search, first version 7.0 in 2008, right now, the current version is 7.3, and the T-Rex version, if you want to implement one now, is 7.1, uh, as I said, patch number 63. So what's the reason for having this kind of products, right? So when we start thinking about it, why would you have a, an index or a search engine, right? And well, it's because you need to be able to search and to do complex searches across the big data that you have, right? So if you have uh, in a typical installation, you will have thousands of business objects, thousands of documents, a lot of information that is typically on the database, right? SAP systems are database driven, so you have tables, lots of them, uh, you have keys like primary keys, secondary keys, you have some indexes, but to do like the, the searches in the database itself, that could take a long time, right? So it's prohibited from, from, from a from a performance perspective. That's why um, you need a search engine if you need to do complex searches. Um, and that's why T-Rex uh, showed up. So this is a comparison of how much it, it, uh, it changes, right, if you do like the search through the database or through a search engine. Um, yeah, as I said, thousands of business objects, documents, a lot of information, um, be, uh, business intelligence, uh, business processes, customer information, vendor information, a lot of things that you might need to, to look or to search through that in a quick uh, way or in a quick fashion. Um, so that's why we need indexes. That's a solution from SAP. 
um, we have the solution is a standalone engine. It's completely separated from the system, so you, you take le the load of indexing, searching, processing the documents, all that load, you take it away of the SAP system itself, right? And you put it in a standalone engine, in a, in a separated host. You may have uh, several of them, and that, that, that way you can escalate in terms of more documents, more indexes, uh, and, and a, a faster search. So you might have seen this presentation, uh, this slide, sorry, in other presentations. This is very common for us, but this is very interesting for me to go from the technical perspective that I, I come from, from a technical world, right? Understanding common execution, vulnerabilities, buffer overflows, insecure protocols, services, to actually know that those uh, services, those, those systems are running business processes. Therefore, any of those technical vulnerabilities uh, on SAP systems could lead eventually to not only espionage, like getting all this information, right? You can read in the slide, sabotage, shutting down the system, uh, a buffer overflow, an insecure command, things like that could uh, shut down the system and you, you don't have the business process running anymore, or even fraud attacks, modifying or tampering with the business information. But our focus now is on these kind of uh, attacks, right? Because what you can do, maybe, if you think about it, you say, hey, yeah, it's a search engine, right? What, what could go wrong? It helps me do things faster. It helps me uh, be more efficient with the searches, with, with some business processes. But the thing is that uh, these uh, external search engines are actually indexing business information, right? So these SAP systems are sending the business data to the search engine and you have their information that could be potentially queried by someone else if it's not properly implemented. So Sergio is going to describe some of the use cases or some of the products that are actually right now using T-Rex, even though if you don't have the, the standalone installation, you may have some of these products as well. Okay, just to tell you to know that there are some places that, where we can find T-Rex. The first example it is, this is the search engine service, or usually common as SES or SES. Um, it comes by default in every NetWeaver. So it allows you to com communicate with T-Rex and perform these searches. So the, the most basic example is when you, for example, go to the customer's transaction, and then you want to find the customer's with letter T. So you go to the field, you, t you type T star, and you press F4. At that moment, you, you have a new window where you can search for this, sorry, for this field. But there is an option where you can use this search engine service. And at that moment, if you use the search engine service, you are going to perform that search within the SAP T-Rex and you will receive the, the result. So by default, uh, SAP has approximately 50 business objects uh, that, gives you the, that gives you the possibility to index them, like vendors, customers, uh, formulas, um, purchase orders, sales orders. All these uh, kinds of objects are here by default, and you can index them uh, without any effort. Then, then you, you can create new, new kind of indexes of new objects, but by default you have at least 50. In transaction SES underscore admin, you can configure this search engine. The second case is the one that JP mentioned before, the NetWeaver Enterprise Search. Is, uh, in this case, the NetWeaver Enterprise Search is a layer which is on top of the search engine service. So the main difference with the previous one is that the search engine service allows the, uh, the, the user to search within a system and just that system. The search enterprise, the, sorry, the Neguida Enterprise Search allows to connect several systems, SAP systems and non-SAP systems 
to perform search uh, within those systems and to retrieve information from those systems too. Uh, this is the main difference, and this is very common. Yes, yeah, so, so if you think about it, uh, it's kind of a layered stack or a layered approach, right? So the most basic use case would be the, the previous one, SES, that you have the business objects, uh, the, um, the NetWeaver or the ABAP system knows how to map those business objects into the T-Rex indexes, so you can definitely go and index those. But then you have also the NetWeaver Enterprise Search, which is a more enterprise-grade solution that you can do um, distributed searches, you can have non SAP systems as well, so it's a, a better or a more robust approach in terms of, of functionality, right? But it's still using SES and then it's also using T Rex. One more example is the SAP Knowledge Warehouse. This is a solution based on Java which allows to manage information about trainings, materials, docu the, uh, documents, manuals. So uh, in the back end, it is using T-Rex for the search on all these kind of documents. Uh, I didn't mention all the examples. I, you can also find T-Rex in some portal features. Um, portal features are using T-Rex in the back end too. I think there are other cases, but we just wanted to mention at least a few just for you to know that T-Rex is, is, is being used in current implementations. Yeah, it's a, it, it really depends on the scenario that you are in, right? You may have portal, be a business warehouse, business intelligence. You may have uh, the SES. There are different scenarios depending on your requirements that you may have T-Rex in, in the lowest layers running and, and supporting all the searches. So let's talk about the, the architecture of T-Rex. This is the main schema, and these are the main components. We have name server, index server, queue server, preprocessor, um, probably one of, one of the most important for us, we're going to see later, the RFC server, the web server, and then the client. Um, the important thing here is that this is a complex architecture, and then uh, the, the idea of these subcomponents allows you to make them uh, distributed. So in a, in a, in a standard, in, sorry, in a standalone implementation, you will have this just like in a box, but you, then you can have, for example, one name server and several index server in different hosts and several preprocessors, so you can distribute, sorry, so you can uh, balance the, the load of the, of the work. So let's see one by one. The first one is the name server. For those who are similar with NetWeaver, it, it's similar to the message server, so it allows to balance all the requests for indexing and for searches between different preprocessors are in, and, index, and index servers. And it also, it also coordinates the, the replication and the information about the topology. So when you are in a single instance in a standalone in the, uh, instance, it doesn't make uh, it doesn't uh, make many sense, but it's, it's useful when it is a distributed uh, implementation. Then we have one of the most important components, the index server, which is the one in charge of actually indexing all the information. So. The index, server, the index server receives the information from the preprocessor, then we are going to see the preprocessor. But then the index server indexes all the information and performs the searches over these indexes. You can search by text, or you also can search by attributes. For example, the, the, the author of a document, the, the date of modification, I know, any attribute that that document has, you can also use it for, for search. Then the queue server, as the name says, it allows you to, to use it as a queue to perform several uh, indexing tasks. So you can use the queue server to schedule some tasks. For example, you want to schedule an index to index a certain object 
like vendors, I don't know, every one day. So, so you use the queue server to have these uh, index, index tasks in, in a correct order. Um, yeah, something else? Basically, the queue, the, the queue server allows you to uh, enqueue indexing processes. So you, if you have an ERP system that is actually consuming the T-Rex, you will have the business objects being modified like continuously, right? And you want to have those changes in the T-Rex. Therefore, this queue server is going to hold all the the enqueue, the, the sorry, the indexing processes of the delta or, or the changes to the business processes to the business options. Sorry. And then the preprocessor, which is the other important component, because uh, every time a document is received by the T-Rex server, the preprocessor is in charge of parse every word of that document, and then uh, it uh, tokenizes every word, it stems uh, stem every word, and then it identifies the, the language, and then it makes like a, it, it parses information, and then it has the position of each word in, in the document. So it has it does a really good analysis of every document. And then sends all the information to the index server, so the index server uh, then index all this uh, work that the preprocessor does. And then for us, the most interesting are the RC server and the web server. These two components are used to communicate with other systems. So when you are going to communicate with an ABAP system, you use the RFC server, and when you want to connect to another system, a non sap system or a Java system, uh, uh, anything else, you use the web server. The main difference, obviously, is one speaks RFC protocol, and another one, HTTP, and receives all the technical queries of information through XML. So this is what we are going to use, the ABAP client and the Java client. And one thing that I want to read for you, this is, it says T-Rex APIs may only be used SAP internally, cannot directly be used by customers or partners. This text was found in, in an original uh, official document, the document of SAP. So, so, so what does it mean? It means that you cannot build a product based mm -hmm. on these APIs, right? So you cannot interact directly with this, uh, with T-Rex, but you, sh you need to use the valid functionality that you have, for example, SES and all the rest of the products. So this interface, the, these uh, APIs are there, should not be consumed by any other product, right? But you have them there. You have them listening to a network. You have interfaces or APIs that are uh, listening for requests. So that's, that's, a, mm -hmm. that's basically, in order to understand how secure this product is, uh, was implemented, uh, you need to know uh, the answer to some of these questions. Uh, for example, how the gateway, is the gateway secured? Because we know that the, securing the gateway is a challenging task, uh, and, and therefore you need to do a process in order to secure it, restrict the interfaces. And can anyone actually access to these APIs? Like, if we are SAP customers, can we uh, make sure that no one is actually connecting to this? So mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're going to try to answer that. Mm -hmm. So let's see the attack scenarios. The first thing as any attacker will do, or when I say this, I want, uh, I want to mean that when we want to protect our systems, we need to think as attackers because I think this is the, the, the best way of protecting us because they are who are going to, they are who want to attack us. So the first thing is to understand how to find a T-Rex uh, server. So this is a, a very simple command of Nmap. And these are the ports related to T-Rex. As any other SAP product, it has a pattern for the port it's always three, the instance number, and the number of the service. You can find here uh, the number related to every component. 
In this case, it is obviously a Cirrus 5 instance. So, anyone familiar with this pattern in other products? Okay, so Java, ABAP, different SAP products are following this, this uh, instance number pattern to allow anyone install uh, different instances of the same product in the same physical host. So we are going to use this HTTP server. So we are going to, to see how it, it, it behaves and to understand it. And then also we are going to use the RC server through the gateway. So this is how it should work. The RFC server registers into the SAP gateway, and then the system sends requests to that server. But then you, have, you could have a malicious client, which, using the gateway, connects to the T-Rex server. So we have a big question here. Do you have any kind of authentication here, or authorizations? Uh, and the answer is very simple because the authentication authorization works here. So if the gateway is not properly secure, we, can, we just can use it to reach the external server. Mm -hmm. And then we can see what can we do with it. Yeah, basically, in order to connect to SAP T-Rex through the RFC interface, you need to know the, the TP name or a program ID, which is uh, T-Rex underscore the seed underscore that the, the seed of the T-Rex instance uh, underscore the date of registration. So it has a part which is uh, some, somehow variable, but once it's defined, it doesn't change. So it's, it's fixed. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Java API, which is just as simple like this. You just need to perform requests to the, to the HTTP server, post request, with a pay, with with a with a XML payload, and then you just get the response. Any so, any idea of the authentication or authorization mechanism implemented here? Any guess? Okay, N not at all. That's right. So now I'm going to show you some demos. We have some videos to show you. These are the things that we're going to see now. First, how to get, using the Java client, the T-Rex version, how to get the, the file system path where all the indexes are located. And then we're going to get all the indexes. So all the indexes and the description of every index. And using the ABAP client, we're going to recognize some T-Rex services and the performance of them. We're going to see the configuration of the alert server which is one of the other main components. And then we're going to get technical information of every index. So, so basically, as these are different demos, uh, we have some videos to avoid mm -hmm. the, the, the issue of live demos. First, as I want to show you how you can connect to the T-Rex, it just, uh, the port, it say it works, and then you need to write slash T-Rex, and then you can see a response in XML which says unknown request. So now let's see how is a good request. We are going to see a burp here, and this is the request. We just use a post request, and this is the XML where you here we have the category of the request. This is an admin request. Then you have the, the method. This, this method is get T-Rex version, and then the location of the index server. So you can ask for different index servers uh, in the same request. <coughs> we execute it, and we just see the result. And here, this is the version. This is T-Rex 7.1 and the revision 63, which is the last one. I think it was released on November or December last year. That was the first one, getting the T-Rex version. Now, let's go to the index path. The same request, we just change 
the method. This is get path. We type the indexer location, which is known already by us. And here we have where is located the all the indexes in the file system. So then we're going to see what can we do with all this information. Now, now we are in the part of retrieving technical information, and then we're going to see what we can do with, with all that information. This is another one. This is the third one, <coughs> getting all indexes. So in this case, it's again an admin request, and the method is get all indexes. indexes. And here we have all the indexes in this T Rex system. And that's, here's yeah, bas basically that's the index name. That's the information, that's kind of the name or the identifier of some storage of information, right? The index is the one that is going to be holding all the information that you have sent uh, in, in an indexed way, right? Here you see uh, indexes of vendor, customers, Purchase acquisitions. Bueno, okay, we have several indexes here. So, this was the part using the Java client, just using HTTP, just a post request with an XML. Then we're going to see, uh, now we're going to see the other case, which is using the ABAP client, which is obviously RFC. This is our script. This this is a function call, an RFC function, which is developed inside the RFC external server from T-Rex. So you can perform this function through the gateway. So which are the requirements before performing this function? Let's wait the video. Here. We have the gateway host, we need the IP of the gateway, we need the port of the gateway, and here the TP. In this case, this is the TP name of the T-Rex. As JP said before, it is T-Rex, the, the seed of the system, and then a, a date. And here how, how we use it. Just a, a little explanation. The first row, it says e phase equal get interface. In when you use RFC, you need previously the, the interface, which are the import parameters, the export parameters, the tables. So you need before executing the, the function. So in the first place, we are defining this, uh, this structure, and we just execute it. Just check that we don't have any place where we are using user and password or client, uh, just nothing. And in my script, I parse the, the result because it, it comes just in one row. And then I just run it. And here's what we have. We have the service location. This is the name server. And then we have a lot of information about the memory, the, the, the percentage of use of the CPU. This is the, the index server, which in, the, in this case is 0%. So let's perform a search and see how it behaves. Here we're using the famous search engine. I'm just looking for red. And just running fast. And now we can see it is now it's two percent. I run it again, and now it's nineteen percent. So it it's a way of seeing how it is working right now. While I I am doing a search, and in the other side I am requesting all the statistics, and I am seeing how is it working. This is the second case. The other server configuration. This is another component which basically is used when you have an alert in the in the direct system and you use it to send emails to the to the administrator to see what's going on and then to, to check. 
So we have another RFC function here. We use it in the same way as previous one. Just the same. And we execute it. Let me, this is the parameters. And here we have the SMTP server where the alert server is going, sorry, the SMTP server of the alert server, which is going to be used as configuration to send emails, the mail sender, the mail recipients, and the mail subject. We have other information, but I think it was the most beautiful to, to show. But uh, basically, it's showing all the internal configuration of the alert server. And you have one more. I would just want to ask you to pay attention to pay attention in, the, in this last one, in this last video, because here we are going to show an index, and to show an index means that we are going to see all the technical information of that index. We are going to see the index ID, which is the one is writing, is wrote the written uh, there, and how we get this ID with the previous scenario where you where we get all the index all the indexes. So there we have all the IDs and the description. So let's put an example. We want to get the customers and we have the index ID of customers. So we, we just need the that index ID and we're going to see the description, all the languages supported by that index, where is located that index, in which index server we are going to see the creation date of the, um, let me move forward. The creation date of the um, index, the modification date, if it is public or not, if it is keeping the content inside, if you can use it for search, if it, you can use it for write, and the free space for that index. And then the most important, the most important for us, all the attributes of that index. It means that it's going to show you every attribute of that index. For example, you have customers, you have the name of the customer, the address of the customer, or if you are talking about sales order, a price, I don't know. We want to see which attribute we have for each index. We execute it. And here we have the index ID. This is for customer accounts, just support English. This is located in this, in this hostname, in this port. It's probably it's keeping the content. What else? It's right the, the free space. And these are all the attributes. And just want to pay attention here because maybe we're going to use it later. We have here, uh, these are the, the technical names of the, of the attributes. If you have an SAP system, you can see and the meaning of each one of anyone them. Anyone familiar with that, uh, with those attributes? Uh, the okay. bank number, bank account. We are Germany, I'm not more um, Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. thank you, Sergio. So basically, Sergio was showing um, how to connect to T-Rex and get technical information, right? Just uh, maybe which are the indexes, which are the attributes of each index, um, uh, what's the CPU load, this kind of technical information which, yeah, you might think about it, okay, it's technical information, it, it, it can make no harm, right? But then you cannot only execute this kind of functions, but you can also use it to search, right? It's a search engine, so you can search and get results. Um, so let's let's keep moving with the presentation and see which is the real impact to the business on this uh, on this product, right? So actually, um, Sergio listed indexes. Uh, we can see the the technical information, or all the, all that uh, that information that we know it's deeply technical. But then, on the other hand. We have uh, users, you have uh, access control, you have GRC authorizations, authentication. You have a lot of barriers, right, to access to what? 
the business information. That's the most important thing that you, you hold within your SAP systems. But then what happens? Do you think an attacker would try to break all those barriers uh, in terms of uh, eventually to get into the business information? Well, basically, if there is an interface that he can abuse in order to get to the same information, then he will definitely go that way. So now let's see a couple of uh, more business-oriented demos. Um, so the full screen. What do you think is more, most, more critical? Uh, customers' information, sales orders, purchase orders, or vendors? OK, let's, let's pick one. Um, let's go for purchase orders. So here, what we, what we have is someone accessing the, the purchase orders transaction and then accessing the, the different uh, information that is there, right? This is an authorized user with the proper privileges. He just has the authorization object, hopefully to do only what he needs to do, which is that and maybe some other thing. Uh, you can see the, the items here. Um, but then also, if you use the same interface that we have been uh, talking to, basically what's possible is to build some query like that, which is a search query, right? You select uh, on, on, on some attributes of one specific index. This is the index of the information. This is the, the ID of that purchase order. And then uh, if you do that query, you will get basically the same results, right? Maybe it's not all the information there, but the information that is indexed is there and available, right? Um, so you can see the ID, the items, um, well, it's all there, and if we compare against the, the, the real purchase order, it's gonna be the same information, right? So this is business information. This information that for some companies might be more critical than for others, it really depends uh, if it's a vendor or a customer, a formula, there is a, a also an index for formulas. It, it really depends on what you enable, right? Or what you actually index. There is also another index for, um, for example, for candidates, when you have uh, the, um, the portal application to, to submit to a job, right? Um, so you have that all indexed, like the, the minimum wage, the maximum wage, all that information. You can segregate that information so it's really, really sensitive. It really depends on how you classify that information. For some of you, may might make more sense. For some others, might might be more or less critical. But that's there, right? So uh, this is, I think, another example. Um, we are using now, yeah, purchase orders. Vendors. We can go with um, we can go with sales order, for example. Um, if we move uh, a little bit more, we will see that we, we can see the sales orders and we can also see the value, right? The actual value of this. So it's also indexed. Um, and it's the same that you will get going to the transaction, accessing with all the authorization objects, with all the barriers that an attacker would try to break. Uh, but this is just um, there, right? Available. So we have to think about this because we might think, okay, it's a technical component, it's helping me to do things faster, maybe to search some, some business objects, some documents, some indexes. So there, there you have the, the value. Um, and if we go to, to the actual transaction, you will see that this, it's exactly the same. Um, so going back with that, uh, you might think it's a technical component, I don't care about, uh, it's not covered on our policies in SOX, it's not part of our productive landscape, but it has tech, uh, business information there, right? So we need to protect it, the same as we do with all the rest of the systems. Um, okay. So, how do we protect against these kinds of attacks, right? Those are the interfaces, that's how it works. It's RFC, it's HTTP, that's how 
Uh, this was meant to work, and these are the APIs that are being consumed by, by all these different products, right? So what do you do? First of all, secure the gateway. We know it's challenging, but you need to restrict access to the gateway, especially the gateway that is being used by this uh, T-Rex instance or, or any T-Rex instance, right? Because the interface with ABAP is going through the gateway, so we definitely need to close RegInfo and restrict who can connect to that uh, TP name, only the SAP systems. Uh, well, it's, it's really complex, but you definitely need to do it. Implement SNC, that's possible. Uh, T-Rex supports the use of SNC, so we really recommend it because, as you saw, that's business information that is flowing through that RFC communication. So you definitely need to implement SNC. Uh, use SSL or TLS for the web interface. Uh, again, in order to encrypt the communication or encrypt the traffic, we need to implement a secure protocol. Um, we have heard about the different, the, the last attacks to TLS, to SSL, so not only implement it, but also implement it in a secure way uh, with certificates, with the proper algorithms and all that. Filter access to the T-Rex HTTP interface uh, to all those systems that are actually not that do not need to connect, right? That's the same principle that we have with SAP systems, right? We should keep our systems isolated from the, the users that do not need to access that, right? So, for example, with SAP system, the recommendation is always to filter the, the database port. You don't need to expose that. Uh, filter, um, I don't know, the management console, for example. Um, there, are, there are a lot of different services. The end users are only using the dispatcher, gateway, message server, maybe ICM. So follow the same principle, restrict access to that service because otherwise we can be exposing information. And definitely keep T-Rex updated. We know that, uh, that from the SAP systems as well, from all the rest of our products, we need to keep it also updated with the rest uh, of our landscapes. So, um, Drawing some conclusions, it's a search engine, right? It's a search engine that allows us to send information there, index it, process it, but we need to be aware that this could be business information. You may have other things, right? This could, maybe if you have it indexing non-critical information, that, that could be the case, that's, that's fine. But if you have business information, you should definitely put a lot of effort into securing this. Um, yeah, because it could hold business information. So by default, there is no authentication or encryption uh, protecting access to T-Rex. You need to implement security around that. You need to secure access. You need to restrict access to those that are not authorized to, to access to the product. Include T-Rex uh, with all the rest of your SAP products and your SAP landscape, because otherwise there is conf potentially confidential information there that could be accessed. And yeah, it's not just a technical system, it's not just another component, it's something that may be running on your landscape and you may have it. So some references uh, in terms of uh, documentation, there is documentation around uh, configuring SSL, configuring SNC, there, is, there are security guides for T-Rex, so I really recommend you to go there. And, and take a look at the references and, and the guidelines and, and make it secure. Okay, I think we have uh, nine minutes for questions. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the great talk. Um, I just missed, missed the part when you connect to the register server with mm -hmm. the uh, TP name T-Rex underscore SID. Yeah. And then there's the 14 digits date stamp. Yeah. Uh, where do you obtain the date stamp actually? Yeah, well, that's the date time is defined when you configure T-Rex with the gateway, right? You use a, um, an application that's called T-Rex admin. Once you define that, then the, the date is defined. It's like the date when you configure that, right? Then how you get that information, you can, if, if SNC is not implemented, you can sniff the network. If the gateway is not secured, you can use the gateway monitor. Uh, well, there are, there are different ways. Uh, the things that it's not changing, so 
uh, you can even brute force it, right? It, it's 14 uh, digits, so it might take a while to... It, it, but it's a date, it. so you know, you know mm -hmm. the format. You can really make it, like, you, you can... Yes. Uh, Restricted to like let's say last three years. I don't know it's uh, okay. it's really something that we know how it's it's uh, defined. No, no, okay. It's just I'm just looking yeah, yeah, no, from that's... the attacker's perspective. So thanks a lot. Thank you. So you mentioned also the, to filter the communication or the the data that is flowing from T-Rex. Oh, to T-Rex. To T-Rex, yes. Um, did you so two questions? Did you mean only to T-Rex or also from T-Rex? And the second question is, how actually to filter? Is there a built-in tool within uh, a SMP server or do we need additional tools for that? Well, you can filter it with a firewall rule, for example. Right? It's, you don't need to expose, or with a firewall in between, you don't need to expose that service to, to end users. Uh, like like the, the same way you don't need to expose other uh, services to end users. And for the first question, it re it's really complicated because it depends. If it's the RFC interface, well, we know that there is this, this kind of communication. You have the gateway in the middle, so first T-Rex registers in the gateway, and then you get the, the, the queries, uh, that, let's say, from any other system, SAP system, to the gateway that is uh, uh, registered uh, T-Rex. So it's always flowing uh, SAP systems to T-Rex. Um, and with the HTTP interface also, it's always that way. Um, but yet you have the registration, so that's the only, I would say the only. You have another one, which is when you index a document, actually T-Rex is gathering the documents from the SAP system, so there is kind of a, an exchange of a key, um, so there is, it's, it's uh, secure in that way, but yeah, there is a flow going from the T-Rex to the, to the SAP system. Hi. Uh, there's a fix for, I think that the, the issue here is that most of the codes are unauthenticated. So mm -hmm. there's something you can do to, to, to for enforce authentication? Of well, of the we have not seen any option to configure authentication. So that's, that's the way it works, right? From an architectural standpoint, that's the way it works. Uh, and actually, you should not be connecting to those uh, interfaces, right? From a user's perspective, you should not be able to, to even talk to that service. That's, those services are exposed. Um, you need to restrict, uh, like you, you, there are things that you can do. For example, SNC would definitely re restrict the, the ABAP interface. Uh, with uh, the HTTP part, you can secure the traffic, but the access to the, to the port should be definitely filtered because there is no authentication there. Any other question? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.